Welcome to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. When you're ready to transform your sales for today's transforming market, we've got you covered with your host, the queen of cold calling and founder of Salesology, award-winning author, speaker, sales trainer, and coach, Wendy Weiss. Hi, welcome to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. And I'm your host, Wendy Weiss. I am the founder of Salesology and creator of the Salesology Prospecting Method. And I'm also known as the queen of cold calling. And today I have a very special guest. Her name is Stacy Hanke. And uh, her company is Stacy Hanke Incorporated. And uh, Stacy is a pioneer in influential communication strategies, and she began her career in voiceovers. And I'm going to ask her about that. Um, and Stacy learned that every word matters, and delivery is the key to being remembered. After 20 years of research, Stacy learned that titles don't matter. Real influence requires trust and credibility. Two factors determined by how we show up, how we communicate, and how we connect. And uh, the good news is, because of this, professionals at any level can influence action, they can motivate decisions, and they can drive momentum in every conversation. So I know we're going to have a good conversation. Welcome. Welcome, Stacy. Thank you so much, Wendy. Thanks for trusting me with your listeners and for giving me a chance to get to know you as well and see what we can do to provide some value. Okay, well, let's get to it then. Um, and I have to ask you, because I start every interview the same way. Um, I did not say this when I uh, did your introduction, but you're also a Hall of Fame keynote speaker. Um, you're a founder of Stacey Henke Incorporated. What's the backstory? How did you become a Hall of Fame keynote speaker? How did you, how did a you lot found of your hard, company? Yes, exactly. A lot of hard work over the years. You brought up in my bio, my history really started off in radio. And, and Wendy, I remember getting the job. I was fresh out of college and I was told, you're going to start producing commercials for us. And I thought, oh my goodness, this will be like the easiest thing ever. I'll record a commercial in what, 30 minutes? And my first commercial took a full day to record like a 20 second commercial. And it was that point early in my career where I realized whoa, just because I thought it was good. That's not always the case that guarantees everyone else thinks I'm good. I also realized the power of the message because you know, when it's just voiceover work, it's your tone of your voice. It's your word choice that determines the level of confidence and trust. In my case, radio listeners were, were going to follow. That's really where it started to increase my curiosity I then worked for some very large corporations along the way, and I was doing a lot of training, every possible topic. What I realized then was no matter if I was training, I worked for Target for a number of years, and I would train their managers how to focus on customer service and return value. And I realized, gosh, no matter what I would teach them, it always came down to their ability to communicate effectively that would determine the level of service or appreciation surveys that we would do with our customers. Long story short, 22 years ago, uh, we're going to be 22 years in August here. 22 years ago, I decided, why don't I try this on my own? And Wendy, I started doing keynotes for events on the topic of executive presence. How do you communicate and build influence through your body language and your messaging? 22 years later, I'm part of the National Speakers Association, and they have a Speaker Hall of Fame. You're nominated by your peers. It was a it was a total shock. There's very few that are in that appreciation, that that acknowledgement. That's how that happened. But it really was just years of you get this running your business. It was a lot of the grind and the the connections and just constantly working on the craft of what I teach executives. And that's how do they communicate through their body language and their messaging? So that's very, very interesting to me. Um, 
And I'm curious if you're working with executives about communicating, and maybe we should even define that because I think sometimes people mean different things when they say communicating. So what's your definition? That's a great place for us to start. So I'm glad you're bringing that up. That will guide our conversation and keep our, our listeners with us here. To me, communicating with influence really is that your body language and your messaging, those two are consistent Monday to Monday. That way, no one ever has to guess who's going to show up on the virtual platform, who's going to show up in their personal life, their professional life. That's one side of this idea of communicating with influence. The other definition is this ability to move people to take action long after the interaction has occurred. And when you think about your followers being in that sales professional role, I always tell my sales audiences, you and I both know that a relationship, a trusted relationship in sales doesn't happen overnight. It's a series of interactions you have with that person that are consistent. Those two definitions are what really how my team and I help sales professionals, leaders, entrepreneurs really accomplish this idea of influence Monday to Monday. So think of it as it's a whole elevated version of what most people believe influence means. Okay. So what does influence mean? Yeah. And that is the influence. It's that the body language and the messaging, they they have to be consistent. Most people believe, well, if I have been selling for a long time. I've been communicating for a long time. I've, I've got the results to, sh- to prove it. That doesn't mean you have influence. And we, we have this disconnect of if I feel good, if I'm told I'm great and you know that false feedback that a lot of us always receive, that doesn't guarantee everyone sees you as influential. And that's where we come in. I, I share with my clients, Wendy, that I, I have coached CEOs whose executive assistants are more influential than they are. And I think what happens as we have experience, and especially in the corporate world, we advance on that corporate ladder. Suddenly you reach a point in your career and people tell you what they think you want to hear. I mean, who who is going to tell a CEO or a VP of sales that they take too long to get to the point? It's, It's hard to follow their message. Instead, we go to the easy feedback. That was good. Nice job. And that's where my team and I come in and say, we're just going to tell you what everyone is seeing and hearing, but we're also going to give you an opportunity to see through the eyes and ears of your listeners. And I I think that's really, really key. Maybe the first big takeaway for your followers here is if you really, you really want to tap into your level of influence, start watching yourself, start, you know, just do this on your phone, start recording yourself to see how you feel. Is that consistent with what really everyone is experiencing when you show up? How do you know what everyone is experiencing when you show up? Yeah. And I don't think you do. I think the only way you do is when I watch myself on a playback, for example, I know we're recording this. I'll go back and I'll watch it. And when I watch our playback, I'm paying attention to, well, how did I feel in the moment with you versus what I see? Because what I see is what everyone else is seeing. The challenge is, again, that that false feedback, Wendy, of if I ask you, so how did I do? How many times do you hear? Oh, it was good. You were you great. Like yeah. saying, oh, I'm good. Well, one of my, my biggest ahas to that concept was so early in my career. After I did radio, I was hired by an association and we hired speakers. So my job was to get on these big stages and introduce the speaker. I was in my early 20s. I thought I was really good just because everyone said I was good. And I'm ready to get up on stage. It's our national sales conference. And my boss pulls me to the aside and he said, while you're up there today, I'm going to record you. And I remember thinking, Wendy, well, why would you want to record me? I'm good. Everyone says I'm good. I had such a big ego because of all this false feedback. Well, he does the recording. We go to this conference room. I can still see the conference room. One of those were just dark, dull conference rooms. And we sit down. We're maybe 10, 15 seconds into my video playback. And he looks at me and he says, would you want to sit through that? 
And I, I remember thinking, well, oh, that's a little harsh. But I remember at that point, Wendy, realizing there's a completely disconnect of how I feel versus what everyone else sees and hears. So, you know what the disconnect for me, though, Stacey, is? Yeah. Um, and this may just be uh, personal to me because of my background. My first career was I was a ballet dancer. And I still, I still dance. And uh-huh. I still, from time to time, perform. And when I perform, I usually feel great. And I usually get really good feedback from the audience. And an audience, I mean, if they don't like you, like they let you, they usually let you know it because they don't like really applaud. I hate watching video of myself. It's really, it makes me miserable. Sometimes I have to do it. Right. Um, But so the disconnect for me and what you are saying is somebody videoed me. I'd probably hate every moment of it no matter whether I was doing a good job or a bad job, I wouldn't need the objective outsider like yourself to come in and say, yes, that was good or no, that wasn't yes. good because I yeah. have no ability to judge. It, it's so true because we do a lot of mentoring and every first session when I'm mentoring someone here virtually, there's obviously a lot of recording because I can tell you what I think. This to me, this is feedback. This is really the truth because it's the eyes and ears of your listeners. And every executive will say to me, oh, I don't sound that way, or I don't like the way I look. What happens, though, when I can point out what is actually working well for them, meaning it's enhancing their personal brand, whether that's trustworthiness or credibility or confidence. Once I point that out, because the first thing you bet, you are going to see what you don't like. For me to just guide them on the piece that works, because sometimes our strength can actually be our weaknesses when it comes to how we communicate, how we show up. When they see that, they realize, oh, okay, this isn't about completely changing who I am. It's taking what already works, but making sure that that strength always outweighs anything that I'm doing that's causing a distraction for my listener to to grasp my ideas. Secondly, Wendy, as much as I still don't like watching my playback. I don't, I don't think this gets easy. The reward outweighs the discomfort. And I've learned over the years that the cost of me not seeing myself through the eyes and ears of my listeners, it outweighs the discomfort that I experience. Not only that, the more our listeners today, the more they watch themselves and listen to how they come across the more they increase their awareness that if they're making their next pitch, they know in the moment if they're rambling. They can make these adjustments on the fly without the client customer ever knowing versus not recognizing what they're doing that's causing a distraction that could be preventing them from not only making the sale, but building that trust with that client. So could you give us some before and afters? I think the biggest one, two, the biggest one is the lack of awareness of truly just overall how someone comes across. That, that's always the biggest aha for our clients. And it's just, it's this that goes into play. The second, especially with sales, and I am guilty as well, the lack of brevity. We get so excited. We're so passionate about our product, our service, our success that we misjudge our listeners and we think, you want to know 20 years of my experience and why I'm so good. And every sales group I present to, they will always say to me, I end up spending five minutes just talking about my success because I feel like I have to prove I'm the right person you want to trust. The third biggest mistake is how they don't know how to build trust through the body language. It's not just the credentials, but this idea of, only speaking when you're looking someone in the eyes. Because if you're distracted, like I am right now, I miss the opportunity, Wendy, of reading your body language, which every salesperson knows. If I can read your body language, read between the lines of the message, that's what allows me to adapt to, do I tell you this story? No, I don't need to tell you a story. Am I going too slow? Am I boring you? Am I exciting you? You can't do that if you lose the disconnection. 
And and my book number three coming out this fall, Influence Elevate It, talks a lot about this of how has influence changed? This is these are ways influence has changed over the last four years. And what it really takes, especially with sales, to elevate it to a whole new level that we don't even realize there's more than just influence. All right. So I'm I'm curious about how this works if you remove the body language piece. And the reason I'm asking that is, first of all, our listeners, they're listening. They're not watching us. So they can't see. We have great body language. We don't have great body language. Whatever it is, they can't see it. They're just listening. And also, you know, my company, Salesology, we teach prospecting. and Lots of times that happens over the phone and there's no body language involved. So yes. how do you replace the body language? Yes, we don't replace the body language. The body language is going to support your voice. So for example, since we're not on video right now and people are listening to me, I am going to use absolutely no body language. And then I'm going to use body language. See if they can tell the difference. No body language here. I am so honored, Wendy, to be on this show to really have impact on your sales followers, messaging, and relationships. Okay, now I'm going to use body language. And the body language I'm going to use is our gestures. And Wendy can see me right now. So so you'll see this, Wendy. You're going to see facial expressions. And I'm going to use body language through my voice. See if you can tell the difference. Wendy, I am so excited to have this opportunity to work with your sales leaders to make sure that they build the relationship out of trust and that they influence action Monday to Monday. Big now, I, I, I'm wondering if anyone's smiling that's that's listening to this. So that's the piece that we teach that whether you're on Zoom, but the camera's not on for whatever reason, or you happen to catch someone like I do, and I happen to catch someone on a phone one day, I will always stand and I treat it as they can see me. Because this is the part about my company's tagline Monday to Monday. How you see me, how you're hearing me right now is exactly how you would experience me if we were at a coffee shop just hanging out, or I randomly call you up one day and I catch you on the phone. And the minute that a sales professional doesn't have consistency in how their clients internal and external experience them, we start messing with the perception of trust. We start messing with our personal brand. And the last thing I think you want to do is your client's guessing, well, who shows up? Even if it's via email or social media, the idea of the consistency is part of elevating your influence. That is very interesting to me. Um, And I want to, we're going to pause here for a word from our sponsor. But when we come back, uh, I I want to talk some more about this idea of how you show up and the consistency uh, with which you show up, because I I find lots of times salespeople think they need to be somebody else. And that's like a weird, to me, that's a very weird place to be, but I'd like to, to get your thoughts on that. But we are going to pause now from a word f- from, for a word from our sponsor, the Salesology Vault. And uh, Just about every guest that I've interviewed on the Salesology Conversations with Sales Leaders podcast has had a gift for our listeners. And that includes my special guest today, uh, Stacey Henke. And uh, so what we've done is we've taken all of those gifts and we put them all in one place just for you. We call it the Salesology Vault and it's packed full of free gifts from sales leaders, sales experts, marketing gurus, revenue generation experts, and we add another gift every single week. So when we release a podcast on Monday, then we add a gift. So you can log in as often as you'd like, you can download as many gifts as you'd like, it's all free. So the link to the Salesology Vault is in the show notes. So as soon as you finish listening to this podcast, Go to the show notes, click on the link. You'll be glad you did. And I am back with my special guest, Stacy Hunky, and uh, her company is Stacy Hunky Incorporated. She is a Hall of Fame keynote speaker. She is a coach and a mentor, 
and um, and authority on influence. So let's talk about this idea that so many salespeople seem to have that they need to be somebody else when they are selling, that wh whoever they are and however they navigate is like, it's not good. So they have to be somebody else. Right. And I don't, I don't know where that comes from, Wendy. And I know that's where I first started when I started the company 22 years ago until I hired a coach. He started recording myself and he said, which one are you? I also had received feedback from clients that would say, gosh, when we met you on a call, you just, you're so natural and we, we felt connected to you. But then you, you got up in front of our salespeople and we were like, who are you? You're, you're different. Well, well, that turned on the light bulb. And I, and I think what we really need to just go back to who are you? So the first challenge I'd say to your listeners is ask why. Why do you do what you do? Why do you say what you say? Why do you behave the way you behave? And you really need to identify what is your personal brand? Because that's one thing, no matter what's going on in the world, you can always have control over is your personal brand, your reputation. Second, knowing that the more consistent you are, the more authentic you are, and those two together create trust. Well, sales is all about building trust. Third, if you are questioning how you come across, the best people to ask are people in your personal life. I am sure your listeners have someone in their personal life that can't wait to give them feedback. <laughs> and it usually is your significant others, your family, your close friends to really ask them, do I appear different? Or how would you describe me? Just, you know me day in and day out. And I bring that up because in our day-to-day -day conversations with family and friends, where we're most comfortable, that's a great place to really identify who you are and how you want others to perceive you. Now, if you want to elevate that feedback, ask someone in your professional life, someone that you can trust is going to tell you the truth on how would they describe you. And if those two are really off or if they're consistent, at least now you've got a benchmark that you can build off of. So what do you do if they're not consistent? Your friends and family say one thing and somebody in your professional life says something else. Yes. Where do you go? I would determine which one do I want. I'm guessing it's probably your personal life because that's where you're the most natural. It's where you're the most comfortable. And I need to go in deeper to figure out, well, why did you say that? What do I do? What do I say where that comes across? I go to the feedback I get in my professional life to ask the same questions. What do I do? What are you picking up on? Is it more of what I say? Is it something about my body language? It's going in there deeper. Now to elevate that, when you, when you have that information, Wendy, anytime I ask for feedback, for me, it is my team where if they join me on a sales call, right before the sales call, I say to them, here's how I want to come across, or here's what I'm working on. Would you watch for that? Would you listen for that? And then after the sales call, they quickly give me feedback. If, if you saw my workspace in front of me right now, I have a lot of post-it notes hanging in front of me. And it's all written feedback that I receive from my coaches, my team. I know that if I have it always in front of me, it's the reminders of what I'm currently working on. Preparing for the feedback gives you more specific constructive feedback than not preparing for it. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about authentic authenticity. Yes. I was, as I, when I was preparing for this interview, I was reading uh, some of your work and you were talking about uh, being authentic. Um, and I guess my first question is really, what does that mean? And then my second question is when it comes to sales, there is this cliche about the uh, used car salesperson. And because of that cliche, I've met so many salespeople or some bus business owners, sales leaders that say to me, I don't want to be like a salesperson. And I never quite know what that means since they are a salesperson. Right. But, um, so I'm, I'm curious. Uh, for your take on, you know, what does it mean to be your authentic self, to be your authentic self, and to be a salesperson? 
Yes. And and how do you how do you navigate that and how, how do you change that so that people can be their authentic selves, comfortable being their authentic selves and still sell? Got it. Okay. I'm just making note here because there's there's several things to unpack. So if I forget to answer something, you you catch me, all right? Everyone defines I'm finding authenticity is like this buzzword. To me, it's that whether you meet me here, Wendy, or I was pitching to you, or you saw me hang out with my team, you always get me. It's just, I always look at every interaction I have. I want the best of me to show up because I know you gave me a gift by inviting me here today. You, you did not have to invite me on your show. My clients, they do not have to show up for our 10 o'clock meeting. I owe it to you. I owe it to your followers. I owe it to my clients and my team that I want to always give them a wow experience. To me, that means they see my name on their Outlook calendar (laughs) and they're not thinking, oh, she is so going to waste my time. But it's more, I want people to look forward to getting a chance to hang out with me. So I know I need to do the work, but it is me that you always get. I'm not turning it on. I'm not turning it off. It's I've created these behaviors that are always genuine to no matter what I'm doing, which to me then ties to the avoidance of being the car salesperson. If you truly are authentic, you are now an educator. I was listening to a sales podcast. This was a number of months ago, and he said it best. He said something to the fact that you owe it to your listeners, your followers, your clients to educate them on what you offer is going to make their life better. That I always look at if I don't tell you what we do, now I don't have integrity to really share with you that I can help make your life better. That's where I look at sales versus I used to think too, I, I don't want to be your typical salesperson. And I thought, well, what does that mean? Because I need to be clear on how I define that. So I avoid it. I really look now at, yes, I'm selling, but I'm selling you value. I'm selling you something that's really going to help you to make your life better. So, so much of it is changing the mindset, focus on the value really perfect that conversation versus getting caught up on, I've got to be a salesperson. You're an educator. You provide value. But until you believe that, I think you walk the fine line of not being authentic. I love what you're saying. Um, You know, I looked up the word uh, sell in the dictionary a while ago, and the definition was something like to persuade someone of the value Mm. of whatever it is you're selling. So the word value is actually inherent in the definition of the word sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's sad because I see so many uh, sales professionals just twisting themselves into pretzels, uh, trying not to be salespeople. Yeah. And um, so what I'm hearing from you is just leave that behind show up, offer value, have a conversation, educate. Um, and that's what selling is. And, and the reward of it, I'm guessing you can relate, Wendy, with your experience of what how great it feels to know that you've given someone a, a product, a service, a concept, an idea that either makes them better, makes their team better, gives them the opportunity to make more money, whatever your service is, you've got to believe that though in your heart. And if you don't, you might be selling the wrong thing. Or in the wrong uh, employment field altogether. (laughs) Go find something else to do. Right. Um, Yeah. Uh, Because when I wake up in the morning, I know for a fact I'm changing lives. And, yes. you know, what, what could be more fun than that? And how fortunate, how fortunate that's what you get to do every day. I mean, that to me is a gift, but I could be in your shoes. And if it wasn't the right product or service, if I didn't really believe in it, 
I don't see it as a gift. So you, you really, maybe we go back to where we start this conversation, not only identifying your, your why and your personal brand, but that also ties to why do you do what you do? Because sales, sales is hard. I, I, anyone that my friends who don't run their own business, they're always asking me, what, what drives you? You've been doing this for so long. And I go, it's because I truly believe and what we do has impact in people's lives. And what could be better than that? I can't right. think of a thing. Yes. Yeah. So I know, Stacey, you have a gift for our listeners. So t- tell us about your gift. I do. It is book number two, only because book number three is not published yet. It will be this fall. So book number two is Influence Redefined. Be the leader you were meant to be Monday to Monday. It is the core to everything that my company and I do, my team and I do, it is also the first step that's going to tie into Influence Elevated. So that book is a great place to start before you even start reading book number three that'll be released in October. Okay, well, I know I will be reading uh, the book. So, and then I'll look forward to reading the book that's being released in October. We'll, We'll get one to you, Wendy. Okay. I, I will I will hold you to that, Stacey. I will. Um, so where can people find you? If people want to connect with you, they'll get your book. Uh, how else can... Oh, and before I ask you this question, I have to share. We're putting the link to get Stacey's book. It's in the show notes. So mm-hmm. I'm enjoying our conversation so much, I forgot to say it. After you finish listening to this podcast, go to the show notes, Click on the link, get Stacy's book. And um, so to finish up, where can people find you after they get your book? If they want to connect with you further. Where should they go? Yeah, if they are at all on social media. We are all over social media, truly as a resource, Wendy. We are weekly sharing tips, concepts, ideas for elevating your influence. If you want complimentary podcast podcast podcasts are on there video blogs all the good stuff white papers it's on our website which is my name stacyhunkyinc.com okay and we are going to be uh posting that in the show notes uh, along with linkedin instagram facebook etc so if you want to connect with stacy finish listening to this podcast then go to the show notes and click on one of those links thank you wendy and um, so thank you, Stacy, um, And thank everyone in our audience. You have been listening to Salesology Conversations with Sales Leaders uh, with my very special guest, Stacey Hunky. Uh, she is a Hall of Fame keynote speaker, a coach, mentor. Her company is Stacey Hunky Incorporated. And um, if you have found value in listening to today's podcast, then please think about uh, one business owner, one entrepreneur, uh, one sales leader, somebody that you know that you think might also find value in listening to this podcast. And please do share the link with them. And until we meet again, visualize yourself surrounded by cash, really large bills. You've been listening to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. Be sure to follow so that you don't miss a single episode. And while you're at it, please leave a rating and review and be sure to share it with your friends. Tune in every week for more exciting insights and wisdom on transforming sales. And until next time, visualize yourself surrounded by cash, very large bills. Mm -hmm.